there's a plastic, I'm sorry, a plant strong enough to replace plastic, oil, and building materials. And that the same plant has been cultivated for industrial purposes for over 12,000 years. Yet it's been classified as a Schedule One controlled substance drug by the U.S. government. Nope, not marijuana. Hemp. Recently, Kentucky Agriculture Minister, Commissioner James Cormer has requested a legal review of the steps necessary for hemp regulation. The federal ban is lifted on growing the crop. That's right, Kentucky could soon be reviving an industry that only a century ago was considered to be the most important cash crop and vital to the strength of U.S. economy. So let's backtrack a little bit and talk about what hemp actually is. Throughout human existence, hemp has been used as an important source of fuel, clothing, shelter, and even food for people all over the world. In this country, industrial hemp was widely cultivated since America's first settlers arrived in the early 1600s. In fact, even our founding fathers acknowledged hemp's enormous benefits. George Washington, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson all grew hemp on their private farms. And Jefferson was even quoted once as saying hemp is one of the greatest important substances of our nation. The Declaration of Independence itself was even drafted on paper derived from hemp. So what happened? How did one of the most versatile and adaptable species of crops in the world also become one of the most politically polarizing agricultural resources? Well, in the early 20th century, the plant became labeled a threat so dangerous that it should be wiped out. But it wasn't dangerous to anyone or anything except the industries that it could phase out of existence. So what did the establishment do to ensure their allegiance to the very industries they serve? Well, they did what they do best. They lied and smeared hemp through a propaganda campaign that associated the plant with marijuana. And in 1937, the Marijuana Tax Act redefined hemp as a narcotic, which required farmers to obtain a special tax stamp to grow the crop. By 1970, the Controlled Substances Act made growing the crop without a DEA-issued permit strictly illegal. Because of the government crackdown on the crop, it has a negative association. And at this point, you still might be confused because of years of being brainwashed to think that hemp is exactly the same as marijuana, or that its close association with it must classify it as a drug. But this couldn't be farther from the truth. Just check out the Congressional Research Service report on hemp that states, quote, although marijuana is also a variety of cannabis, it is genetically distinct from industrial hemp and it is further distinguished by its use and chemical makeup. So, hemp is genetically distinct from the drug, marijuana. In fact, if you smoked an entire garbage bag full of hemp, you wouldn't get high. Yet the plant remains illegal under US federal law. And like I said before, not because it's a danger to people, but because it's a danger to corporations. In the early 20th century, hemp competed heavily with the cotton and paper industry. Because paper made from trees had to compete against environmentally friendly hemp products, the paper industry was at risk to suffer. So, William Hearst, a New York State congressman and one of the biggest newspaper publishers in America, launched a campaign against hemp. He used his publication to smear the public's perception of the crop, which at the same time was threatening his successful paper company. In fact, this very campaign is where the term yellow journalism derived from. But this was in the 1920s. How is the propaganda still working today? Because the threat hemp poses isn't limited to paper. Reviving the industry could potentially devastate the profits of huge corporations that manufacture lumber, fossil fuels, steel, alcohol, and even food, among many other things. Including this. In 1941, Henry Ford even built a car made almost entirely from hemp. The frame of the car was 12 times lighter than steel and 10 times stronger. Not only that, but the car was powered by hemp seed oil. Do I even have to explain the threat that this technology would pose to giant oil companies? Processed hemp also creates one of the strongest fibers we know of, providing all natural materials to build homes, ships, trains, planes, and automobiles and practically indestructible clothing. Furthermore, hemp seed oil can be made into lotions and skin creams. The practical applications for this plant are limitless, and the reason it remains illegal is simple. It's just one giant push to preserve the profits of corporations that poison our planet, destroy our forests, and bankrupt the world. But this all could change if recent efforts in Kentucky are an indication, and if moves by a few key members in the U.S. Senate succeed. 
Hemp could soon be removed from the government's list of Schedule One controlled substances. The hemp industry could very well be revived back to being America's number one cash crop. And that's one step closer to succeeding against a model of profit, greed, and control that sadly defines this country today.